Hey there, I'm Pastor Randy. Welcome to Vernon First Baptist Church. I'm out here with our little peach tree where our peaches are growing. But well, we want to invite you to come into our sanctuary today as Mary Coom and her team lead us in worship and as we celebrate God the Father's goodness to us and his great love for us. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here, and I um, am happy that Pastor Carl is with us, and he's going to light the uh, Jesus candle. We have Spencer with us, and of course, David. We're so uh, pleased to be with you doing the praise and worship this morning. Our theme today for our praise and worship is loving God, loving each other. And the first song is, Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me.
Psalm 103, verse 8, please read. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. And in verse 11, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. We worship God and call him worthy because of what he does for us and how he cares for us. Praise God. Jesus' name above every other name. 
in Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Dear friends, in this time of concern and difficulty, let's just love each other with the love of our Heavenly Father. Yes, O oh Lord, this is our desire, to love our God, our Father, and to love each other, making music with our friends, loving each other so that the story will never end. This is not only your command, Lord, but it is our desire. And so we commit ourselves to you again. Help us, Lord to love God the Father, and then to love our fellow man. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's our community lifetime and we've got a number of things we want to run past you, let you know about. Life continues to go on, even more so as we go into summer here. Yeah. I wonder how many people know where we are right now. Well, I don't know, you know, we might be in an orchard, right? Or, or who knows, out in the middle of the woods or, or whatever. But uh, if, you, if you know, you could, yeah, send us a text message. You have our cells, uh, type it in the chat, let us know. Yeah. And your prize can be coming to enjoy some of these lovely cherries mm -hmm. if you can figure out exactly yeah. where we are. Yeah, Smitty says they're good, so they got to be good. Absolutely. But it's a special day. I know it is baby bottle day. We are to return our baby bottles if That's we can. That's right. Father's Day today, so let's, yeah. That's bring, why they bring your today. bottles back, yeah. Hey, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Randy. And, and all the other fathers out there. To you, for Dad. Sure. All the Definitely. dads. Definitely. Yeah, we honor you and are thankful for you and your input in the lives of your families through, through all the years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and if you don't fill up your baby bottle yet, if you want to hang on to it and spend some more time filling it up, that's, that's right. great. But let's support the Live Well Clinic and their ministry.
Yes, for sure. Now, coming up this week, uh, we've got a few other things. Mm -hmm. I know um, the ladies' Bible study has met for a couple weeks. Yeah. And they're going to meet again on Tuesday, their last time. For the summer, yeah. Yeah, and then Thursday, Thursday morning, we're going to restart the Gospel of John uh, Bible study. And uh, for those of you who would like to come out, uh, let, let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll get back into it. I think that would be great. We can be meeting together in small ways, socially distant. I think we should gather for breakfast. Ah, Let's do that, eh? That would be so good. Men, do you want to come for breakfast 8.30? On Saturday? Saturday morning? Yeah, let Let's... me know. We, we have to, Yeah, you know, we can't have everybody, so uh, let yeah. me know because we have to cut it space off. us out. And, yeah, you have we have to, to be to space us out. You have to be spaced out? We have to be spaced out. We have to be spaced out. <laughs> and women, if you want to come for a, a women's breakfast as well, then let Linda know, mm -hmm. and she'll have her capping numbers as well. So Saturday morning, let 8 us know. 8.30. 8.30, we're going to be safe, and uh, yeah, and it'll be good. I think yes. it'll be really great. Well, this week, of course, as well, uh, Monday is National Indigenous Day. Yesterday, the 19th, was Juneteenth, which mm -hmm. is now a, a national holiday in the States, um, honoring the heritage of black people. Here on Monday is National Indigenous Day. Uh, honoring our indigenous heritage. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we have been already journeying this last week, over the last few weeks, regarding this and the situation in Kamloops, and we're going to continue to be praying. So if you want to join in, you can catch up on our YouTube channel. We've been praying Monday, Wednesday, Friday, praying through the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People from the United Nations. And so we're going to continue doing that. They're not long five to ten minutes, yeah. little little slots, yeah. just focusing in on the articles of the Declaration and praying through those. So join us on that. Uh, thank you for your continued generosity and your mm. giving. You can do that at the church, and we love seeing people come in and, and give their tithes and their offerings, yeah. or by e-transfer, of course. Yeah. You're also yes. generous and giving to the ministry, so thank you so much for mm -hmm. that. Blessings on you for the rest of this service. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to gathering as soon as we can safely be singing together inside. We will let you know uh, when we can do that and how we can do that. Yes, for sure. Yeah. It's our Not Just For Kids moment. Good morning, children. My name is Doris, and I'm Pastor Carl's wife. I have been asked to do the Sunday, to, to explain your Sunday school lesson to you today. Jesus wants us to remember to always love and be kind to others. He wants us to show love and kindness to all the people we meet. And he was very kind to other to people when he walked on this earth. He made the blind to see the lame to walk. He did many wonderful things for people. And that's how he wants to, us to treat others too. And when we do it for others, we do it for Jesus as well. You're probably thinking, we're just children, what can we do? But you know, when you think about it, there's lots of things you can do. And I want to just share a few things in my life that I did when I was a young girl. You know, I went to, a, uh, I lived in the country and I had to uh, go to school in the summertime with the horse and buggy and in the wintertime with a horse and sleigh. And it was four kilometers from the farm that we lived in. And my grandmother only lived two blocks from the school. So at lunchtime, I would often eat my lunch really quickly and run to her house and I would spend time with her and I loved my grandma and she loved me and we would have so much fun together. I loved to braid her long, long hair and we played games, we read books, but oh, I so liked to stay overnight with my grandma and that often happened on the weekends and you know what, she used to rub her legs at night with Absorbing Junior, and I just love the smell of it. I'll never forget that. 
So we had a lot of good times together. Let me tell you about my father. When he was 20, or probably younger than that, he signed up to be a soldier in the First World War with the Canadian Infantry. He was there for about four years, but he was taken prisoner of war. And they kept the prisoners in boxcars, empty old boxcars, and they only fed, fed them bread and water. But the guard that was taking care of my father, he was kind and caring. And he, he let my father live. And so when the war was over, he, he was sent home with the other survivors. When my dad was in the hospital, he had, he had a heart attack. There was a nurse that nursed at my dad when he was in the hospital, and one night he had another heart attack, and she was able to uh, give him the proper medication and look after him, and he survived. I was so impressed with this young girl that I decided that what I wanted to do when I was finished high school was go in nurses' training and become a nurse so that I could help others get well, be of service to them. So that's what I did. I'm 82 years old now, and I have an eye disease called macular degeneration, and I can't see well anymore. And I made up my mind that I would do whatever I could through my disability. So I can still bake cookies and muffins, and so I make little goodie packages and take them to my shut-in friends in care homes and visit them, and they just love it, and I love them. Just remember that whatever you do for others, you're doing for Jesus, and you will be rewarded. He has blessed me with so many things in my life, so I'm very thankful. So God bless you and off to, to study your lesson on your own now and with your parents. And uh, just remember, whatever you do, you're doing it for Jesus too. Good morning. On Father's Day, we wanted to offer the prayers of the people here in our sanctuary. Looking down there where hopefully we'll all be sitting together soon. We're looking forward to that. So please join us in prayer. Here we are again, Abba, Father. We present our requests to you as you have taught us, longing for your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us for those times we have forgotten to seek you in your righteousness, but have chosen to go our own way. Mm -hmm. There are many whom we know who need your touch, your wholeness. We think of them now by name. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Father, giver of good gifts, we thank you for walking closely with us through this difficult year, for the ways you have moved and changed and broken and healed us. Continue your good work in us. Today we give you thanks and praise for fathers young and old. We pray for young fathers newly embracing this precious vocation and for fathers and grandfathers with years of experience. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family and faith in joy and humility. Grant them the grace to represent you well. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion walks with them in their sorrow. Bless those fathers who have taken upon themselves the responsibility of parenting, who may be alone by choice or by circumstance, as well as those who long to be a father but cannot. We lift up those men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. We remember our fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers who are no longer with us but who live forever in our memory. Mm -hmm. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love 
and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. On this Indigenous Peoples Day, let us be of good mind to reconcile the mistreatment of the original inhabitants of our land, to honour their trauma and to listen to their grief. Reconciling God, have mercy and show us your humble way forward. Give us your eyes to see each other and hearts to embrace without judgment. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our life and light. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been getting some exciting news that pretty soon, sometime this summer, we're going to be able to come back together to be here in the sanctuary together with some more freedom. And I'm excited about that. Thanks in particular to those of you who have gotten vaccinated. I know many of you have gotten your second vaccination already. And thank you for doing that to help us build up to that herd immunity where we can be together and be safe. Of course, we're still praying for the variants and uh, the effect here in our city in Vernon and around the world. Just heard from Tim and Kelly Hutton that they're having to be on lockdown from, uh, from Friday, was it even Thursday? Maybe from Thursday all the way through the weekend. And that's just tough lockdown again. That's in Bolivia. So we'll be praying for them, and it looks like, hopefully though, we'll be able to be back together in here, and you can hear a sermon in person. Now, who's excited about that? I don't see any hands. No, I don't. I do wonder, though, when we come back together in here, how many people will be trying to mute me or pause me with their hands? I don't know. I'm excited to see what will happen. I'm not sure. Of course, we'll continue to ensure that you can stay home if you are wanting to, and uh, I don't have a concern about that. We're going to have you live streamed in, and so you can continue to be a part of our services and a part of our community here, even if you aren't ready to come back to Sunday morning services, or maybe you're from out of town. That's fine too. Or uh, Now, I do know that many of you have enjoyed not just uh, this service online, but maybe two or three or, or many other services or sermons through the week as you've learned about YouTube or on TV. There's many great preachers out there. Now, I will say there are many online who would tell you that you should listen to this pastor or that preacher, but not this one or not that one. With access to so many teachers, how can we trust who we hear and who we choose to listen to? I propose, I propose to you that we need to, as our street chaplain Chuck keeps telling me, keep the main thing the main thing. That's what we find today as we turn to scripture. We see that Jesus has an idea of what God's plan is all about. That it can be hard for us to get our heads and our hearts into that. And that we need to be careful who we're listening to. So pray with me as we come to the word again today. Lord, I ask that you guide us. Guide us into your word by the living word. Jesus, open our hearts to hear what you have for us. Open my mouth to speak the words you want us all to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So turn with me now to Matthew 7, if you haven't already. And I am going to read that for us. Now, I will say we were down, I was thinking I might get someone to read scripture for us when we were down at the hospital this morning. Grace's member, we had you pray about and told, Grace told you about her staff appreciation day. Well, I was going to grab someone there to, to read their scripture for us. And unfortunately, it was so noisy right by the highway, but it was a wonderful time 
Hundreds of staff came out to be blessed by Grace and her team of on-call chaplains and spiritual care providers, and they were so thankful and honored to be blessed. Do not stop blessing the hospital staff, doctors, nurses, now, everyone. So it was an awesome opportunity to bless them, and I encourage you to keep doing that. Look for ways to bless them. Paint a rock with a heart on it and go and drop it down there by the main sign. There's some there. Look, reach out to someone you know and bless them. So we get to do the scripture reading right now because we didn't have the opportunity to do it there. So turning in your Bibles, Matthew, that's right at the start of your New Testament, about, uh, you know, Five six of the way in there, and Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 is where we're going to read from. Enter into the Sermon on the Mount once again with Jesus. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we've only got two more weeks left, this and next week, and we are through the Sermon on the Mount It's hard to believe that we're so far into June. Once again, happy Father's Day to you, if you're a father out there. And we're going to end up finishing up the Sermon on the Mount. Well, in this passage, we find out, like I said, what Jesus thinks God's whole plan is about. Jesus has been giving us such wisdom, insight, teaching, And here in verse 12, he wants to give us some further applications. Start to, finishing off the sermon. And he says, so, so in everything. And this word for so, your version might have, your translation might have, therefore. The Greek word means either one of those. After all I've said to you, I've told you what it means to be in my kingdom, for me to be your king. Jesus says, therefore, so do to others what you would have them do to you. This sums it all up. Well, there are a lot of examples of history of this type of what we call the golden rule. What's fascinating to know, though, that even before Jesus it was used, But it was often used negatively. Don't do to others what you wouldn't want them to do to you. Well, that's somewhat easier to achieve, isn't it? As long as I don't do bad things to people, I'm doing all right. And often we think that way. This is not what Jesus says. And what is God's plan all about? Because Jesus turns it on its head. He is not about inaction, but about action. Do to others what you'd have them do to you. Take the initiative. And I thank you so much, Mary, for leading us with your team in worship around such a key theme. Loving God and loving others. It's what Jesus said are the two greatest commandments. Doris, you reiterated this in your, in your kid's moment. I loved it. He said that this summed up the whole law. The only other time he has said that, that it sums up the law and the prophets, is in our passage today. And I want us to go back to that mount. Can you imagine what it would have been like for the people sitting on that mountain listening to this? What they would have thought 
their eyes might have glanced over to the Pharisees watching on the one side of the crowd. They've given decades to their lives, decades of their lives, to studying and understanding the law. The, the regular people there, way behind compared to those. Really? Jesus. Or they might look over to the zealots on the other side. Men who have trained with their bodies, ready to fight for Yahweh, to fight for the law, and to throw out the unrighteous, the Romans. And then Jesus says, all, all the law and the prophets can be summed up with the golden rule? Is it really just that easy, Jesus? But Jesus knows to truly do this, it's hard to get our heads and our hearts around it. He talks about the narrow gate and the wide way. This is like getting through a narrow gate. If you go along with everyone else, that's easy. Whether it's the comfortable life, I don't want to submit to anyone. Have someone tell me how to live. I just want what I want. I don't know if you've seen this piece of graffiti. I love it. Against all authority, except my mom. Yeah, definitely don't cross mom. Or whether maybe it's the self-righteous life. You feel good about the group that you're in and you're all getting it right and we exclude others. It's because I'm in this group that I feel good. Jesus is saying that following him is completely different. It's not about doing what everyone else is doing. I do want to point out one thing here. The Greek word that Matthew is using here to translate few find it, harisko, it's better translated few are those finding it. I'm not so sure that Jesus is saying that only a few are going to find it throughout history. So just get used to that. I, I think he was saying, as he looked around that crowd on the mountain, there were only a few following him at that point. Only a few, only a few were finding it. But he knew, he knew how his message was going to spread. And it is worldwide now. And in order for us, though, to stay focused on the main thing, and getting our hearts in that right space for the narrow gate. He is concerned about who we listen to. The irony here is that Jesus would be the one who was considered the false teacher, the false prophet by the leaders of his day, by those Pharisees on the edge. But he's the one warning about them. Jesus wants us to be a little skeptical about who is teaching. There are many speakers in his day, and some he would hold up as prophets. John the Baptist. But others were clearly into this for at least what he thought were the wrong reasons. They might have thought they were right, which is why maybe they were wrong. Listen to what Matthew quotes John the Baptist saying, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing them, this is back in chapter 3 of Matthew, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I can tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Uh, John and Jesus were on the same page here. Though it seems that some of the Pharisees did repent and follow Jesus. They were living in the midst of many factors. Pharisees with the Essenes, the Zealots, the Sadducees, etc. There were many polarized peoples, each saying that they were the way. But Jesus wasn't having it. He knew it wasn't about which group 
you were a part of, your tradition. The problem is, we are in such a polarized society, maybe even more so than they were, where we feel comfortable in the group where we belong, and it's easily, easy for us to quickly condemn anyone that we don't like, that challenges us, or our way of thinking. And often as a false teacher or a false prophet, as Jesus would say, watch out for the false prophets. So how can you tell a false prophet, a false teacher? Well, Jesus tells us, you have to look at the fruit. Is it good fruit or is it bad fruit? Well, how, what, what's he meaning by fruit? I think there's at least three things. One is the promises they make, the lives they live, and the teaching that they give. So let's look at promises. One great example are the dozens of prophets that were so confident of the second term for the 45th president of the United States. And some are still saying that God's will must be done and that the current administration will be overthrown. Now, if a teacher is going to go on record and make a promise that God is going to do something at a certain time, they better be right, or we don't have to listen to them. According to Deuteronomy 18, they could even be stoned and definitely not to be respected or feared. What are their promises? Do they come true? A true prophet, God will see that those promises come true. Secondly, their lives. What are their lives like? Though the fruit is not only about what they promise, it's how they live it out. Do we see the fruit of the Spirit in them? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. James, the brother of Jesus, who was too proud to follow Jesus while he walked on earth, wrote this, James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Humility, good deeds, fruit of love. When I think of ferocious and ravenous wolves coming in sheep's clothing, I I hear some echoes of the residential school survivors as some of them have told their stories in these last couple of weeks and from before. Using that phrase of those who came to them in the name of Jesus, who took them from their families and then took so much more from them. We sang... They will know we are Christians by our love. Well, I think we need to ask, how do our Silk neighbors, the Okanagan nation, know that we love them? Do they? How will they know? So we need to watch the promises that teachers make, the lives that they live, but also what they teach and beware of what they teach. Second Peter 2.1, Peter writes, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Paul even names some false teachers and warns about their teaching in his second letter to Timothy. He says, Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. And hear what he says. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Peter and Paul, they're pointing out key doctrines that must be upheld. Did you hear 
the big ones, denying Jesus, saying the final resurrection has already occurred. These are big deals, doctrinal issues. They aren't going about fighting over dogma. What one church might teach and what another one would teach, but essential doctrines. Uh, an example of this would be baptism. In this past year, our church decided that we would allow into members, into membership, people who had been baptized as a believer by another mode of baptism. We teach and practice immersion, complete dunking. Baptize means to dunk. And that's what we practice and preach. But we realize other traditions haven't always, haven't always taught that. And that that's an item of dogma. It's not a central doctrine. To be baptized, yeah, Jesus commands us to baptize each other. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So baptism, ultra important. How you were baptized, lesser importance. Unfortunately, we are too often willing to denounce Someone as a heretic because they're teaching something that we're not used to, that we're not comfortable with, or something like that. It's not actually against Jesus. And we can be tempted to make them sound a lot worse than they are to affirm our denouncements. Actually, there's a lot of people that are making a living at this type uh, of work, being false prophet, false teacher, hunters. Their battleground is YouTube, the social media, on the radio. The problem, of course, is that these hunters are very quick to judge and condemn. Sometimes they nail it right on for some, but often they're making assumptions and accusations that are not confirmed. If we keep this in context with the golden rule, do unto others as you want them to do to you, we need to treat Others like we would want to be treated. No one wants to be judged, to have the worst assumed of them, to have their words taken out of context, to be considered a heretic when they love Jesus and long to love him more. A great example of this is how some feel about John MacArthur. Look at these warnings. Now, I may not agree with John on everything, but I'm not about to judge him as a false prophet. In fact, I like his definition of false teachers. False prophets can also be identified by their converts and followers. They will attract to themselves people who have the same superficial, self-centered, unscriptural orientation as they do. Egotistical, proud, self-centered, self-indulgent, self-willed, and self-satisfied while being Religious, but never God-oriented or Scripture-oriented. Some of these hunters have tried to point out Pete Scazzaro as a false teacher. Pete's a pastor that I know he leads the emotionally spiritual, emotionally healthy spirituality course that we're currently going through right now. We're finishing up our last session on Wednesday. I think we'll do it again in the fall or in the spring if you miss this one. It's one that focus on the family as highly endorsed, but some out there are saying that he's a Buddhist, an Eastern mystic, because he affirms the biblical tradition of being still and silent before God. Or because he was willing to read and learn from the hit rich history of Christian tradition through past centuries, whether it's Catholic or Orthodox. Yet from MacArthur's quite severe definitions of false teachers and their followers, Scazzaro was cleared, showing a following that is dedicated to Scripture, God-focused, humble, and willing to know oneself deep enough in order to root out our self-righteousness and learn to love Jesus even more through his word. So what is Jesus' concern here? Is he wanting us to spend all of our time afraid of what everyone else is saying, 
teaching, ensuring that we only listen to someone if they agree with what we think? No. We are to be cautious about what we hear, but not overreact. Jesus doesn't want us living in fear. Remember when the disciples came to him? I love this story. Mark 9. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Jesus just says, do not stop him. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. And he would probably agree with Paul when Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4, Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. And that's when we can see someone who maybe says they're serving the Lord, but the, their lives don't show it. Bad fruit comes out. Now, I know that you have untold numbers of teachers available to you, the best preachers of the world, available on TV, and if not, on YouTube. Now, let me encourage you not to seek to denounce as many false prophets and teachers, though there may be more than a few on TV that we should be wary of, but watch for their fruit. Even the fruit it brings in you. Do you love Jesus more after hearing them? Do you have love for those around you and sense Jesus' invitation to justice and righteousness? If not, maybe it's time to watch someone else or to listen critically. And I encourage you to do that with me as well. If you have concerns about what I say from this pulpit, come and talk to me and let's sort it out and learn together. In the end, it comes back to what Jesus says. How Mary led us in worship, what Doris said in the kids' moment. We have the love of the Father. And if we can grasp that this Father's Day, if we can begin to understand this incredible love of God offered to us through the work of Jesus reconciling us to the Father, then perhaps we will grow in our love for God and it will spill out into our love for others and we will do to them what we would long in our hearts for them to do for us. A love that bears good fruit. And if a teacher's focus is off of what Jesus is saying here, then be wary. Now, just this week, I had the privilege to hear Elaine Alec, a local Indigenous woman, speak on cultivating safe spaces. It was a real privilege to learn from her. And she told us that we're not to try to fix other people, Indigenous or not, just to get to know others. And then to work on the broken systems that have caused us all trauma. And more than anything, you know what she said? Please teach your children how to love others so that when they meet mine, they will love each other. Sounds a lot like what Jesus is saying here. Let's pray together. Jesus, may we focus on you as we find you in this word, your word, as we find you the living word. Speak your message to us that we would understand your greatest commandment to love you and then to love others, to do to others what we'd love for them to do to us. Continue to change us by your love so that all who know us will know we follow you because of the love we share. In your name we pray. Amen.
For closing benediction, I invite you to open your hands and I want to read this from the message for you. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. Add up God's law and prophets, and this is what you get. So go in the love of the Father, sharing that love with all you meet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Pay attention. Right. Yes, we're back. And we're, we're back. Wow. I went down in here at 40. There's 40. <laughs> um.